It's a truth universally acknowledged that a boss has one job in a video game, to make your job as a hero a lot harder. But not all of them seem to have got the memo. Rather than getting your ass handed to you, they hand you their ass instead. And only now I'm saying it do I realise how weird that idiom is. GLaDOS doesn't even have an ass. <laughs> Here then are the bosses who beat themselves for you, but we're spoilers for the following games. Okay, Spyro, jump through that hole in the floor to get down to Crush's dungeon. I'll help you by tossing sheep through the hole, if I can catch them. Good luck. Hmm. Spyro the Dragon is an adorable reptilian hero who isn't afraid to burn other creatures alive if it'll get him back even a little bit of health. Yikes! I thought this game was for kids! However, whilst flames are your main weapon against most enemies in the series, there is one boss in Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage who has other ideas. Really taking the mini out of mini boss, Crush is a proper heavy hitter. He can make himself invulnerable to your flames by standing on vents on the arena floor, and if he stomps on them, he sends dangerous energy waves and projectiles your way. This forces you to jump around loads, lest you want to see Spyro spiral. Ouch, no wonder dragons went extinct. Those idiots. With all this, you might wonder how in the heckins is Spyro supposed to deal with this guy? Well, fortunately for you, Crush isn't the sharpest tool in the shed. Firstly, he opens himself up to a flame attack by switching between vents. And while your flames do absolutely zero damage to him in the end, his reaction does plenty. Yes, such is his rage that he smashes the floor with so much force that the ceiling collapses around him. But it's a mistake Crush makes over and over again, knocking down his own health until he is finally buried in stone in what is possibly the strangest case of nominative determinism we've ever seen. Ouch. If only his parents had called him alive. We all know Donkey Kong, the big ape that likes to throw barrels. Well, what about barrels that throw themselves at him? That's what you'll encounter in Donkey Kong Country, playing as the original Kong's grandson, accompanied by his nephew Diddy. When you reach Kremkrok Industries, you come across a sentient steel drum, and no, not the fun musical kind. Painted with an ominous skull and crossbones, this tubular terror apparently hasn't heard that Donkey Kong and Barrels are usually on the same side. Instead, this so-called dumb drum immediately tries to crush you, and when it's not trying to crush you, it attacks you with its contents, which is fortunately not litres of toxic sludge, but a bunch of easily punchable minions. You understandably might wonder how the hell this fight is ever going to end when you can't land a single hit on this creepy container. That is, until Dum Drum crashes down a final time to flatten you into an ape pancake and... Yup. Turns out that every time Dum Drum came down to smush you, it was only damaging itself. It was just your job to avoid its attacks and let it crush itself to death. Well, now I get why it was called Dum Drum. You chose this path. Now I have a surprise for you. Deploying surprise in five. Four. Time out for a second. That wasn't supposed to happen. Do you see that thing that fell out of me? What is that? It's not the surprise. I've never seen it before. Never mind. It's a mystery I'll solve later. By myself. Because you'll be dead. GLaDOS is a super intelligent AI who guides you through the various tasks and trials of the Aperture Science Enrichment Center. Very impressive. Please note that any appearance of danger is merely a device to enhance your testing experience. However, as time passes, you realise that she's actually guiding you to your demise, your final clue being the time she tries to burn you alive. All aperture technologies remain safely operational up to 4000 degrees Kelvin. 
Best assured that there is absolutely no chance of a dangerous equipment malfunction prior to your victory incandescence. Thank you for participating in this amateur science computer aided enrichment activity. Yeah, in retrospect, that was quite a big hint. Eventually, you come to the inevitable boss fight, which kicks off after GLaDOS tricks you yet again. Good news. I figured out what that thing you just incinerated did. It was a morality core they installed after I flooded the enrichment center with a deadly neurotoxin to make me stop flooding the enrichment center with a deadly neurotoxin. So get comfortable while I warm up the neurotoxin emitters. Damn it, GLaDOS! How is a stupid human like me supposed to compete with a super intelligent AI? I'm yet to beat Solitaire on Windows 95! Well, fortunately for us, GLaDOS isn't always as smart as she seems. With her morality core off, there's nothing to stop her from using turrets in an attempt to murder you. But she hasn't stopped to think about how you're in possession of Aperture Science's fancy portal gun, even though that's the main thing of the game. Nothing. Add these two things together and you can easily redirect her rocket straight back at her in a super futuristic robotic version of stop hitting yourself, stop hitting yourself. <laughs> yes, while she may have tricked you into allowing her to release neurotoxins, she also tricked herself into a huge self-own, knocking off yet more pieces of herself with her own rockets. I let you survive this long. <laughs> All you have to do is pick them up one by one and throw them into her own incinerator until... Hey, don't be mad at me, GLaDOS. You did this to yourself. Life must be pretty tough for Bowser Jr. Not only does he have to live up to his father's reputation of kidnapping princesses and has inherited all of Bowser's enemies, but also his first appearance was in Super Mario Sunshine and how is any other game he's in supposed to follow that totally tropical gem? Come enjoy a natural wonderland to which we've added the world's finest resort facilities, a spectacular amusement park and succulent seafood. Whoa. All this and more. Ah, that's the stuff. Well, Bowser Jr. has bravely made many more appearances in subsequent titles, including New Super Mario Bros. U and its deluxe re-release. Unfortunately for him, in this one he made himself look a little bit silly. You first face Bowser Jr. underwater, with his Koopa car becoming a scuba car filled with torpedo Teds which are like Bullet Bill's aquatic cousin. Even worse, these targeting Teds home in on you and are difficult to escape. <laughs> that is, unless you put something between you and them, something like Bowser Jr. That'll do it. Yes, unfortunately for Bowser Jr, he didn't think of the possibility of you using him as a living shield. So this boss battle ends up being a nice swim for you as Bowser Jr just blows himself up over and over. It's extra silly as Bowser does have plenty of non-homing torpedo Teds that you have to avoid and that can't be turned against him. Maybe just use more of those. <laughs> But no, stubborn Bowser Jr. really thinks that, hey, maybe this time I'll get him. No, it won't come back at me again. It seems that those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Which must mean the History Channel doesn't learn anything as it's full of reruns. Make season 12 of Ice Road Truckers, you cowards. Bowser Jr. does briefly seem to learn his lesson, as the next time you face him, you actually have to try and land your own hits, but then he immediately forgets as he punches a huge hole in the hull of his own ship. I'd say give yourself a big hand, Jr., but you'll only hurt yourself with it. If you need to be smart in a tricky situation, the usual advice would be to use your head. Well, one enemy in notoriously tricky trial and error platformer, Super Meat Boy, took that advice a little too literally, fortunately for you. In the hell chapter of the game, and by that we mean actual hell, not just an even more difficult level, you come across Little Horn. He does not live up to his name as no, he is not little, and no, he doesn't have a horn. Instead, he is a huge great clump of dead ewes. Yes, he is made up of all the dead meat boys who have fallen to hell after you accidentally face-planted them into a buzzsaw and he wants to add currently living you to the party. 
However, one attack he uses probably needs a rethink, smashing his face hard into the rock as he tries to turn you into super meat paste. This is not only one of his most easily avoidable attacks, but it also hurts him more than you, what with it being his face meeting a rock with a lot of force. The fact that Little Horn gets a great big lump on his head doesn't put him off in the slightest. As the fight continues, he is more than happy to keep bashing his corpse-constituted face onto a hard surface in an effort to squish you under him. What's wild is that this is not even his most effective attack. His fists not only slam down just as hard, but they also sweep across, making it an attack that covers the entire platform. Plus, most importantly, it doesn't injure him at all. And this isn't even mentioning the mental scarring caused by his burning Meat Boy corpse attack. Oh, that's in my nightmares forever. But he seems pretty insistent on using the face slam, meaning that all you have to do is leap gracefully out the way as he becomes the author of his own demise. Or seeing as he's basically lots of yous, it's still your demise? Or since they're dead, re-demise? The word demise has lost all meaning now. In The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Little Link has to face a lot of enemies in his journey across Hyrule, but most terrifying of all are the Guardians. These ancient bits of sentient tech possessed by Calamity Ganon are tactically sprinkled across the world, creating areas that you can't go near unless you want to get into a very one-sided fight with the local residents. Now, you can beat these mini-bosses with a well-aimed Guardian arrow to the eye, like they're some kind of robot version of King Harold in the Robots Battle of Hastings. But these arrows are hard to come by, and you're unlikely to have enough to take out every wandering guardian on Hyrule Field. But one thing that can really damage a guardian is a guardian. More accurately, the great big laser that comes out of them to ruin your day. Pick up one of Hyrule's metallic shields, and you'll be able to reflect their laser attack right back at them with a perfect parry. This is particularly useful when there's a whole gang of them wanting to make your day a lot worse. Okay. Cool. Cool. <laughs> oh my god, that was awesome. And if that sounds like too much work, you could also splash out on a special auto-deflecting guardian shield, which doesn't even require any special timing on your part. So all you have to do is stand there with your shield up, while the guardian takes chunks out of itself like a big spidery idiot. <laughs> Fortunately for us, these machines never learn from their fellow machines' mistakes, so we can help loads of Guardians shoot themselves right in the eye with a laser. Ah, see, this is the reason I don't trust laser eye surgery. Now, perhaps I could give you one more chance to redeem yourself. Oh, thank you, thank you! You can count on me! So what do I do? Patience, my dear. What have we here? Well, if it isn't the cornerstone of light. In the Kingdom Hearts series, you play as Sora, the big-footed, spiky-haired Keyblade wielder who constantly hangs out with Donald Duck and Goofy. Go forth, Sora, Donald and Goofy. Yes, Disney and Square Enix looked at the waterfowl with a foul temper and a character originally named Dippy Dog and thought, these two are the ones who will help our hero save the world. Ah, one didn't deal with me. All in good time. But fortunately for you, some of your enemies are also less than capable at their tasks. One prime example is Pete, the large cat who is in league with Maleficent, and, fun fact, predates Mickey Mouse, originally appearing in the animated short film Alice Solves the Puzzle in 1925. Can you tell I've spent too much time on the Disney wiki? <laughs> Pete isn't the brightest of sparks, but it is his job to steal one, namely the cornerstone of light which protects the Disney castle and is hidden beneath it. So Pete heads back in time to when the cornerstone was out in the open and steals it from right underneath our hero's noses. Or Bill, as the case may be. Oh no! The cornerstone's gone! 
To make his escape, Pete legs it to his old steamboat, punching his past self out of the way so hard that we're surprised it didn't cause some kind of wibbly-wobbly timey-wimey time paradox implosion. Gotta spend less time on the dot too, Wiki. Your future's on the line, Valley, so back off and give me the boat! The cornerstone! Oh yeah, Donald, the cornerstone. Don't worry about time possibly collapsing in on itself. It's at this point that you'd think, oh well, Pete's gone, all is lost. You bugs could follow me if you wanted to! But in his hubris, Pete decides to paddle extremely slowly along the river and taunt you as he escapes, all while throwing objects at you. Two mistakes here, Pete. One, you could have just zoomed off easily out of range, and two, you're just giving us ammo. <laughs> yes, every bit of trash he chucks at you can be hit straight back at him, eventually causing him to spin out of control and into the riverbank where you can smash the cornerstone free. <laughs> and he does this multiple times, not once learning from his mistakes like the worst ever dodgeball player. Show us what? How not to make a getaway? How to beat yourself up by throwing heavy objects at someone who keeps perfectly hitting them back at you and open yourself up to a fight that you could have easily avoided? No sympathy, Pete. And you wonder why they don't sell Pete ears at Disneyland. It serves you right! So those are some of the bosses who basically beat themselves up for you. Can you think of any other examples? If you can, then please drop a note in the comments with your suggestions. And if you enjoyed this video, then there's every chance you'll enjoy some of the other videos we make. We make loads of videos, we do let's plays, we do live streams, often they're playing video games, uh, sometimes they're just sort of uh, like having a chat or doing something weird, doing some crafts or something like that. Um, they're really fun though, and if you did like this video, then it, it, it will be your kind of thing, I, I strongly suspect. So why not subscribe and hit that like button and ring the bell as well. I mean, while we're doing things, why not ring the bell as well? I mean, you may as well. And that way, you'll get notified when we upload new videos. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.